Hello everyone, my name is Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem Pythagorean triplet. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? Given an array ARR of n integers, write a function that returns true if there is a triplet ABC from the array where A, B and C are on different indexes that satisfies A square plus B square is equal to C square. Otherwise, return false. So basically, what we need to tell is that uh, we are given an array which has n elements. We need to tell whether a triplet exists such that it follows the Pythagorean formula or the Pythagoras theorem. That is, a square, sum of squares of two elements is equal to square of the third element or not. So even if there is one triplet, we need to return true. We just need to tell whether there exists such a triplet or not. If there are no such triplets, we will return false. For example, here uh, we can see a equals to 3, b equals to 4 will give me 9 plus 16 that is 25 and uh, c equals to 5, 5 square will also give me 25. So 3 square plus 4 square is equals to 5 square. We have found one triplet so we will return yes. Here there are no such triplets we will return 0. You don't have to take input or print anything. You have to complete the function check triplet which takes an array, a single integer n that is the size of the array as input parameters and returns boolean denoting the answer to the problem. Boolean variable will be true if there is a triplet which follows Pythagoras theorem otherwise false. The driver will print yes or no instead of corresponding to the boolean value return. So yes or no printing will be taken care by the driver code. The expected time complexity is n plus max of array of i square. So max of array of i is the maximum element of the array and it's a square and the expected auxiliary space is max of array of i. The constraints are given here. So now if we think about solving this problem, so basically see there are n elements in the array given and we need to tell whether a triplet a, b, c exists such that in the array such that a square plus b square is equals to c square such that it follows the Pythagoras theorem. If even one pair exists, we will return true, else we will return false, okay. Now what can be the brute force approach? The brute force approach can be to use three loops like one loop with index i, other other loop with index j and another loop with index k. I will take care of a, okay, one uh, loop will be for this element, another loop will be for this element and another loop will be for this element. We will basically traverse over all the triplets possible and for each and every triplet we will check whether a square plus b square is equal to c square. If we get even one triplet we will return true, okay. So this would be the brute force approach but the time complexity of the brute force approach would be big o of n cube right so we cannot do this much we have to decrease its time complexity now and tell me one thing see what we can do here is if i convert this into two loops instead of three if i convert it into two loops so let us say one loop for a and one loop for b okay so i will get a square plus b square right so i can assume it to be c square right then how will i get c c will be equal to nothing but square root of a square plus b square are you getting my point what i did in brute force i needed three four loops i want to decrease the time complexity so can i do it in two four loops yes so what i can do is i can loop for these two elements one for one loop will be for a another loop for, will be for b every time i will calculate a square plus b square right now instead of looping over for all the possible values of c what i said okay i have a square plus b square then my c will be equal to under root of a square plus b square okay if my c exists in the array then my answer will be true else i will move on to the next pair possible of a and b right in brute force we were checking using three four loops all the possible values here what we did we calculated a square plus b square calculated c as under root of a square plus b square why because understand one thing if my a is 3 and b is 4 so 3 square will be 9 4 square will be 16 the sum would be 25 that is c square and c would be equal to 5 so now i need to check whether c equals to 5 is present in the array or not instead of looping over all the values because for a particular a and b there can be only one c possible if it exists right so there is no sense looping over all the elements right so now I can simply check whether my C exists or not in the array. But here also we can think of optimizing it or even or more. Why? Because if I use two for loops over the complete array, it will still be big of n square. And we were said that the elements of the array are till up till 1000. 
the array of i goes up till 1000 right so what i can do is i can take a count array let's say count array of size 1001 right then what i can do is i can store the frequencies of each element of the array in my count so what i basically mean is i can say count of uh, 3 equals to 4 what does this mean that element with value 3 has occurred four times in my original array so i can use one for loop and update the count array basically i'll take a count array initialize all the indexes as zero then traverse my original array and update the count array so what i can do i can say count of array of i plus plus for i equals to 0 to n minus 1 right so i will store the frequencies of all the elements in my array now what i can do see suppose this is my count array with indexes 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay which basically represents the count of each element in the original array suppose my array is let's say uh, 1 uh, suppose the values in the array are between 0 to 6 only okay uh, so let's say it is 1 3 3 4 uh, let's say 5 6 and 2 okay or let's say not 2 but 1 so what will be my count array count of 0 will be 0 count of 1 will be 2 count of 2 will be 0 count of 3 will be 2 count of 4 will be 1 5 will be 1 and 6 will be 1 right now i can loop over this array okay i can use two for loops why this will be more beneficial because here the size of the loop will be thousand because the maximum count maximum value of any element is thousand so the count array will be of thousand size whereas n was of size 10 t power 5 are you getting my point n was a pro, uh, the maximum size was 10 t power 5 and the array of i maximum size is thousand so if i do two loops over count array it will uh, make a loop size 10 t power 6 whereas n square will give me 10 t power 10 okay so what i can do is i can use two for loops uh, for, uh, one for a and one for b okay so let's say my i is at 3 and j is at 4 i know that count of 3 is greater than 0 so 3 is present in my array count of j is also greater than 0 so 4 is also present in my array now i will calculate value of c value of c will be a square plus b square that will give me uh, 25 so this will give me 5 now what i can do i can directly check if count of 5 is greater than 0 if count of 5 is greater than 0 it means that i have found a triplet yes the count of 5 is 0 it means i have found a triplet so suppose this count was 0 I, yeah, uh, the count of 5 is not greater than 0 it is equal to 0 i have not found a triplet are you getting my point so i will use two for loop. first of all i will construct the count array then i will use two for loops over the count array and whenever count of i plus is greater than 0 and count of j is greater than 0 i will check whether i square plus j square under root that value is present in the array or not if that is also present we have found a, a a triplet i will immediately return true otherwise i will next move on to the next loop okay i hope you have understood the concept now let's look at its actual implementation so now if we look at the actual implementation so i have taken some variables here uh, which will be used further and i have also taken max element as array of zero why because i want to declare that count array so what will be the size of the count array it would be max element of the array plus one so first of all i have initialized max element as array of zero and then i have used a loop from i equals to one to n minus one and i have updated the max element equal to max of current max element and array of i so in max element i will get the maximum value of the array then i can declare this count array of size uh, max element plus one okay uh, in which i will store the frequency of each and every element i have initialized all the values as zero then i have used a loop of size n and incremented the count respectively then i will use two for loops from one to max element and j equals to i plus one to max elements as i said if count of i is greater than zero and count of j is greater than zero first of all i need to check whether both of the elements are there in the array or not first of all a uh, so i square okay so here what i am comparing is i square plus j square under root is present in the array or not okay so i square i have stored in a and j square i have stored in b c will be equal to a plus b 
सो सी विल बी इक्वल टू आई स्क्वायर प्लस जे स्क्वायर ओके बट आई नीड अंडर रूट ऑफ दिस सो डी विल बी इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सी सो डी विल बी इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सी विच इज नथिंग बट आई स्क्वायर प्लस जे स्क्वायर ओके सो बेसिकली आई एम चेकिंग वेदर आई स्क्वायर प्लस जे स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू डी स्क्वायर एग्जिस्ट और नॉट ओके सो डी इज इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सी नाउ आई अगेन नीड टू क्रॉस चेक वेदर डी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू इज इक्वल टू सी और नॉट वाई because it might be possible that c is not a perfect square are you getting my point so for example let's say uh, i is uh, let's say 2 and j is let's say 3 so i square will be 4 j square will be uh, 9 i square plus j square will be equal to 13 and their square root will return me what it will return me 3 are you getting my point because these are all integers so d equal to square root of c but c is not a perfect square so if it is not a perfect square there cannot be a pythagoras triplet right so but this will return me 3 so after calculating d i will again cross check whether square of d is equals to c so what i am checking here my c is equals to 13 that is i square plus j square my d equals to 3 that is a square root of c now i again cross check whether d square is equals to c d square is 9 and the c is 13 these are not equal so this was not a perfect square instead you can think if c is 25 d will be equal to 5 and d square will be equal to c right so this is a perfect square so i am again cross checking if d square equals to c and if the d that the this value is less than equal to max element it should be within that range and count of that element is greater than 0 then i have found a pair so i will return true if return true does not execute any time then finally i will return false what would be the time complexity time complexity would be the maximum time is taken by this that is max element square and here i am using a uh, max element size for loop and here i am using n size for loop so i can say big o of n plus max element sorry i can say max element square okay because uh, n is the full uh, size of this for loop and max element square is the size of these two for loops and what would be the auxiliary space the auxiliary space here would be big o of max element right which is the uh, space occupied for this array now let's submit this code let's submit it so we have solved this question successfully i hope you have understood the solution completely thank you